Hey everyone, today I thought I'd do a video on using gesso for priming miniatures. I've actually noticed that this is something that many people have been doing for a very long time in the miniature hobby, and then others, it was it's sort of foreign to them, and even if they've been actually in the miniature hobby for quite a long time in painting miniatures, it's not something they've ever considered. It's not typically something that I see advertised by companies that produce miniatures as options for priming. Um, it's usually not in typical tutorials. I didn't really even know what gesso was. Um, I've heard people call it gesso and gesso. Um, as far as I know, it's supposed to be pronounced gesso, but uh, say it how you will. Um, what I have here is a tub of Amsterdam brand artist quality black gesso. As I understand it, it's also available in student grades as well as artist quality, which are usually, it's usually white and thinner. Um, you can get gesso in different colors. Black and white seem to be the most common. I had to look it up as for what it actually is. It apparently is, this is a acrylic based gesso. There are other formulations that are used for oil painting specifically. But this has acrylic polymer medium in it, as well as chalk or cal calcium carbonate, as well as a pigment, which would in this case be black. And then usually chemicals that ensure flexibility and long archival life is what it says. And, I, and this is in the context of oftentimes gesso is used on canvases, which I've heard of that as well. And I've seen Bob Ross had his own brand for that. Um, so, there are some videos on YouTube you can look at. Um, I thought I would do my own here exploring this, um, but uh, certainly it is something that's been used in the miniature hobby in the past. One of the advantages with using gesso is that you're not spraying it, you're brushing it on. And for most miniature painters that have used brush on, brush on primers, you know that given the fluctuations in humidity and temperature at different times of the year and different locations, it is valuable to have a product that you can use inside in, let's say, the cold months or even in months that might be very humid depending on where you live. So this here, I left the sticker on here, but this was only $12.95 Canadian. For American, you may be looking at 10 or below, potentially, if you just look at it from an exchange rate perspective. So that's actually quite a lot of gesso. This is uh, not a 28 millimeter miniature. This is a large miniature. And so this is quite a hefty tub there that you're getting for that amount of money. So um, I did already apply this on a large model, which is the thing from Night Models. I'm quite happy. This is only one coat, and I am quite happy with the result. Now, even in the instructions, it does say that you should use multiple coats. You know, you you can do, you know, they expect that you'll be doing two to three coats. It dries very quickly, and I will be doing a demonstration today with it so you can see that, but because there are, are a lot of cracks in this model that at times, because you apply it on thick and then it sort of evaporates and becomes extremely thin, almost shockingly, if you've never done this before, um, what I would do is I, I covered the whole, th whole thing, literally, and then um, I just kind of touched up spots that were the raised surfaces in some cases you could see through. But then even after that, that wasn't really fully two coats, but even after just a little touch up after one coat, I did notice that there are some uh, little bits of shiny areas on the inside of the cracks that um, you can see just where it's not completely covered. And I could just show that here too. Right there you can see that's a glaring spot on the side of his nose. But, um, you know, oftentimes when we prime, we have to do a little second spray or a little, something like that, and I don't think that's any different than here. What I would um, say in my limited experience already is that for the same reason that I prefer um, on larger models using an airbrush to either prime or paint at times if they're quite large, like vehicles in, the, in this hobby, the model, you know, 
kits, like larger cars or something like that. The the even spray pattern of a of an airbrush gives me an advantage when painting larger miniatures. And because of that, I likely won't use gesso for really large models. Um, I, I, I likely won't brush on a product, even going forward, for le really large models. I'll likely stick with my airbrush primers. However, um, where I actually see for myself in this hobby the gesso being an advantage is for most of the models I do, which are the miniatures. And I really see that quickly gooping on, you know, a light gooping of gesso around the miniature um, and not really before it starts drying on the same model is helpful because even when doing this it can start drying to some degree even while you're gooping it on and putting it everywhere and that I don't like is I don't like um, hitting like a tacky primer that's starting to dry with with the brush as I'm doing it and so um, yeah so that's only one one comment that I would mention there I'm just going to pan out and show you the miniature that I'm going to paint today in front of you and let you watch dry in a time lapse to, to get an impression of this. Here I have a Ralpartha Cyclops circa 1990. Um, this is pretty close to 28ml, it may even be 30ml. Um, I'm going to be using it for the 15mm battle, AD&D battle system scale. and so. I wanted to grab something to do this for today, and this seemed like a perfect opportunity to perhaps prime this one up. Um, and so yeah, what I will do is I'll just be brushing this on, and I'll have a clock on in the background after I finish brushing it to show how long and just show you how it dries. So this product does say to apply this in greater than 10 degrees Celsius as far as temperature goes, and you are supposed to just wash your brush and tools with water when done. They say soap and water. I just used, I actually did use a brush soap and water to clean out my brush. Um, but of course this is also for other purposes like painting, like gesso on, on canvases and things like that. So this is actually pretty easy process. You are gooping it on. Um, if anything, it makes more sense to goop it on than to try to apply it thin because it will not cover if you apply it thin.
Okay, so I'm back and I stopped the clock at about 21 and a half minutes. Um, for the most part, it, this is dry. Um, there may be just a little shiny part on the right shoulder there that might be a little tacky. Um, it's hard to tell a little bit, but it might just be just that it went on a little thicker in that spot. But for the most part, I would say this is dry and I haven't reviewed the video yet, but I would be, um, I wouldn't be surprised if you were able to see with that time lapse some of the change of the um, the light pattern and the sort of wetness on the model as it dried on it over those 20 minutes. There were um, some spots here that I can see. I definitely I, I missed two spots under here that I have to fill in um, with the brush, but there's a spot right there that's pretty apparent and which would be typical of that sort of experience where it contracts a bit as it thins. Um, now we all are told that we're only supposed to really put the lightest coat on our models. Um, we don't really want to goop on primers to um, have detail missing. And you can see a couple of indentations in the hair similar to with the thing with the cracks that I'm, I would have to um, put a little more on. So I'll do that after this video. And I'll, I'll just spot put a couple on and there's a crack in there that I just probably didn't goop it down into there enough so it didn't really get into it with my, the brush. And you can see on the, the leg here a little line. But overall, um, just that quick gooping on the model is really covered pretty uniformly most of the model. Um, there's just a couple little detail areas that could actually be um, covered at this point. And let's see if I can attempt to show this, but if you look, I really think the detail and let's say the coat has been preserved. And as you, you can probably tell, I gooped that stuff on very thick. So I obviously don't have a lot of experience with using gesso and then painting on it because I'm just starting to use it. But as far as um, the first application of a primer onto the model, that is sort of the process. And I think that this has some really a good chance of very promising results as far as something to be able to brush on at times. Um, I probably, like I said, would use it on smaller models. And um, when you're brushing it on, I mean, even though there's little areas that I might have to just put a second coat on, I could probably put a second coat on the whole thing according to the to the instructions. But um, I like I think I'll get away with just touching up these spots. And uh, when I'm spraying and I only have limited angles and things like that to work with, less maneuverability with a brush, I can end up at times with even a harder time making sure the whole thing's covered. And so really, I think uh, it's fairly promising. So I hope you find that interesting and you could try using gesso and experimenting a bit with your miniatures and seeing whether this is an alternative method for you. Okay, take care everybody.